Hello and welcome to Extra Time with me, Gary James, and guest Cash the Flash Gill. Now, he's been described as the UK's most prolific kickboxer and has an impressive lineup of British, European and world titles under his belt. He's the first British UK Asian to be a world champion in a contact sport and holds the record to this day for being world kickboxing champion four times. Cash, great to see you and welcome to Extra Time. Hi, Gary, thank you. Thank you. So, Cash, we've got an impressive array of, uh, impressive array of belts here. But where did it all start and when? Um, well, it started back in 1980 as a 14-year-old kid living in Hansworth. Yeah. Obviously, Hansworth is famous for the wrong reasons, for the riots and the high crime rate. Um, and I wanted to do something positive. And uh, I seen a demonstration in the local park of kickboxing. I thought, wow. Because I was a boxing fan. I used to watch Muhammad and Daddy fights and all that with my dad. Yeah. And um, Sugar Ray Leonard fights and all that kind of. Tommy Hearns. I like the boxing shows. And when I seen this demonstration of hands and feet working together, I thought, wow, I could have a go at that. So I went down to the local leisure centre met Howard Brown and Godfrey Butler, and that's it. The rest is history. <laughs> well, tell us about the history. <laughs> <laughs> so from then, I mean, you had, um, you won your first sort of uh, championship or, or, or competition, really, I think aged 18, but, but it wasn't in kickboxing, was it? Well, what it was, I started off as um, freestyle karate with the, with the system. It was like modern karate kickboxing. Yeah. Um, we started to do belts. So the first thing I'd done was got my black belt, which took me four years. Mm -hmm. Once I, got my, I used to look competing in like what we call TIG and TAG competitions. But then when I turned 17, close to 18, I wanted to do full contact. Full contact karate is actually where you knock people out, but kicks above the waist. Kicks below the waist is described as kickboxing. And when you do the grabbing of the knee and the elbow, that's tie boxing. So I've done all three disciplines. So I started off with kicks above the waist. And um, I won the world title back in 1986, which was over in France, the two-day championship. Uh, three fights on the first day, and then the final on the Sunday. Mm. And, and cash the flash. I can see <laughs> your dressing gown there. He's absolutely brilliant. The best dressed guest we've ever had on, on extra time. Um, so where did it come from? Well, where this did is the flash come from, well, or is that the clue? Well, this is the one I went to bed at night. <laughs> <laughs> I had, um, obviously, the flash name fitted like a glove. When I first started fighting, I was quick and I was fast. And my coach, Howard Brown, is went, Cash, no doubt, you're the flash. So we kept the name, <laughs> and, it, and that's it. We've kept it ever since. So I was trying to keep it, and obviously my entrance was always flash as well. I brought a Bangra band with me. Yeah. A Bangra band bring out a live, you know, the big doors, the big drums, the Indian. That was my uh, tradition. I've got an Indian background, Indian parents. Mm. So we brought a, a marching band out with us, which was live, and, which was going back to 1991. People are doing it now, but we started it off yeah. with like 10 or 11 costumes, all like this flashy, <laughs> banging the drums, livening the place up. And then obviously brought the, the glitz and glamour. But once you get in the ring, you've got to live up to it. Mm. And, and I said there in the introduction, you still hold the title to this day uh, for kickboxing of holding four world titles. No one else has, has beaten that yet. Um, do you think somebody might, or you reckon that's fairly um, safe? Well, nowadays, it's a lot easier to get a world title. So, you know, the, the record could have gone, but, you know, a lot more, lot more people are world champions. You know, mm. people say to me, oh, the sport's grown rapidly, but back in the day, in the early 90s, it was tough getting a world title. You know, the guy that bought me the first world title fight I had was a guy from Australia called Alex Tui. He, he was an animal. He was an unknown quantity. He came to, he came to, to break me down. And, yeah. uh, about third, fourth round, I really felt like giving up, but I was always in good condition and good shape. Thank mm. God. And uh, I always have a good right hand <laughs> and I put him to sleep. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, today, whatever you say, I'm agreeing with, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, talking about that uh, and, and a good right hand and a good kick, um, you're known for having the greatest comeback ever. Let's take a quick look at that and then we'll tell us about it in just a couple of minutes. Here we go. Let's have a look at uh, Cash the Flash in action. Super fight though.
one in the boxing ring. Cast the flash, go teach you something. I want them come and know you better watch out. Tara come off in a big scream and jump. Them a ball for the one cast the flash. And a boy could I ever taste that. I want them come and know you better watch out. Would I kick you two time and I give you two clout. And from there, so now I did boy get knocked out. Cast the flash. Well. There we go, brilliant stuff, and, and that's the greatest comeback ever. So tell us, tell us about that, Cash. How's every time, I, about? Every time <laughs> I see that, I want to start training. I want to get my kit on. It looks easy to me, that. <laughs> it does look easy, but come on, who, who are you fighting there? Tell us a little bit. That was a guy that we thought was going to be a pretty easy fight, but in round seven, he hit me with the best punch ever, which was called spinning back piece, and he hit me, and he spun around full body weight, and he broke my nose. You know, people can see that on YouTube. You know, it's called, we call the great comeback, Cash the Flash, and and he broke my nose, he broke my heart. I went down. I took I took a count. <laughs> And round eight, I just held on to him. That's why we haven't seen round eight, because there's a lot of holding. Yep. And I grabbed yep. anything inside. I grabbed the referee, grabbed the ropes. Anything that was inside, I was grabbing. And I recovered, and I cleared my head. And round nine is just in. I hit him with the right hand, and he went down. And I just got a second win. I thought, whoa, we're excited. I suddenly felt energetic again. Yeah. And I finished him with a head kick and left hook, which, which is a hard technique. Obviously, I spent a lot of time working on my knockout punches and knockout mm. kicks. I make them look easy, but I did spend a lot of hours and time on them techniques. Yeah. So and, and I know you took something like 100 out of 100 fights, about 43 or 44 knockouts, wasn't it? Um, yeah, probably half, yeah. 46, yeah. 47 knockouts. But um, knocking somebody out, it's all about timing. Not having the best punch. If you time it right, the knockouts will happen. Yeah. And that was what, back in 1995, did you say? Yeah, it feels like yesterday, yeah, but 1995, it's 20 years ago, but it's still a classic. You know, it's one yeah. of them fights that people can watch for years and years to come. It's always going to be there. And a lot of my fights are like that. You know, back in the early 90s, I had some tough fights. This is, these ones in England weren't as tough as the ones I've had across the world, because I've been right. out to Australia, I've been out to Hawaii, South Africa, I've been out to all of Europe, Germany, and I've had some really, really tough battles. Yeah. You know, some of them, oh, me and my coach talk about, me and Howard, my coach, we talk about them. But people, if they could have seen all these fights, we haven't always got the footage of these fights. But, you know, I was out there, you know, with the Lions and I come back as victorious. Sometimes we had close fights, we were robbed. Sometimes I was fighting higher weights because I was fighting 11 stone too. I used to go up to 12 stone sometimes at short notice as well because I was constantly training in the gym all the time. My trainer, how would you say, Cash, you're going to have to get a girlfriend or something. You can't keep coming to the gym. I'll be fighting on Saturday night. I'll be back in the gym on Sunday morning. You know, that's, that's why that I always... That makes a champion. Yeah, that's you right. You have to yeah. sacrifice something, yeah. don't you? Sure, you know, that that yeah. makes a champion, mate. That's right, yeah. So when I say to people, you know, it's all about discipline, dedication, hard work. No, I'm a fine example of that because constantly living in the gym. You know, I, I left school. I went straight in the gym. I was training three times a day. You know, people say I train three times a week. I went three times. I train three or four times a day at one and a half hour training sessions, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes one hour, one and a half hour. And my weight I had to fluctuate between 10 stone 12 to 11 stone 6. So people say, why had you to die? You know, back in the day, there was no sports science. And a lot, I wrote the book as well and, and the documentaries and stuff. And I yeah. always say about, about um, a lot of the time I was dehydrated. I was and I was like quite dizzy and I was weak. But, you know, luckily, I, I still had the power. I don't know how I kept the power, but when I look at it now and I was training with all my fighters, I always say drink more water, a bit more healthy. With sports science coming along, it's great and more healthier for fighters. Yeah. I mean, what, was, what sort of diet were you having in those days then, you say, without the sports science? You know, was, it, was it like the footballers and other sports, lots of carbohydrates leading up to, to a bout, or uh, was it something different, lots of fruit and veg? Or? Well, it was like starve yourself, really. Was it? it was don't drink any water for three days. Don't don't have this. Don't have that. And so you know you train on the on the Wednesday or Tuesday with a black bag on, sweating yourself, trying to make the weight with the sweatsuit on, skipping. <laughs> and then your trainer goes, right, don't eat now. You think, don't eat now. But then you just have a small amount, have a little bit of food, then have a little bit of fruit. Not not much. I eat twice a day, sometimes to keep me going. I had a few peanuts, do a little bit of cheating. Um, but, but you know, it was difficult. That was the hardest part. My fighting, I didn't find difficult at all. Fights I really enjoyed. I went in the ring and I felt great. But the dieting, the, the, dis eating. the discipline was, was tough. Well, that's interesting. I would, have, I would have placed money on the fact that you had to have a really good diet and, and you know, make sure you got, you got enough inside you to, to, to cope with a fight. But yeah, but a lot of the fights, I did drop under the weight. You know, being 10 on 12, I was coming down to 10 on 10. The management side on that side of the fight yeah. wasn't as good as it is now. You know, now you get you know UFC, you got good contracts, you get two hundred and fifty thousand pound contracts and all that. Back in our day, we weren't doing it for the money, we we're doing it for the love. And when you do something for the money, it's it's difficult. So I did it for the love and I just wanted to travel the world, you know, I got to see the world. And I'm from Hansa, you know, I've been to all these places <laughs> in Australia and Hawaii and South Africa. I've seen some lovely places. If it wasn't for the sport, I would never have seen them. No. And and obviously you were the guy to beat. That's yeah, right, back yeah. Then, back in the day. Yeah. I was a, a threat in Europe. I was getting less fights because obviously 
people didn't want to fight a dangerous guy. Yeah. Because obviously there was a chance of them getting knocked out. Mm. All right. Well, um, we're going to take a break now. Uh, we're going to go and have a, a cup of water, I suppose. <laughs> That's all we're allowed. Uh, please join us in a couple of minutes um, when we'll be back. And uh, Cash, we're going to be talking about uh, my life in a flash. And we'll do that uh, very soon. And we'll ask you about these belts as well. And uh, we'll do that in the second half of, uh, of Extra Time. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. You're watching Extra Time with me, Gary James, and special guest, former kickboxing champion, Cash the Flash Girl. Uh, Cash, just before the break, we were, we were talking about your, your diet coming up to fights, but what about training? What's, what was the training regime like? Yeah, well, training was tough. I would say, you know, the training of being a fighter is the toughest part of your life, but it's a very enjoyable part of your life. There's nothing better than being in shape. You, know, mm. you're great. you look in the mirror and you, you feel great. But, you know, getting up in the morning, I used to have late nights. I'll go through my tra day, day of training. I'd get up in the morning, say, you know, 9 o'clock, sometimes 7 o'clock, depending if I was dieting, have, have breakfast. Um, I'd go to the gym and do an hour and a half workout, which includes, you know, bag work, pad work, skipping, shadow sparring, sparring, and circuit training as well. You'd probably go home, and I used to have an afternoon nap, nap for 45 minutes to an hour, then go out to the le local leisure centre or the, you know, health club, and I'd go on the treadmill, and the whole place you to look at me because I was on that treadmill going really fast. It wasn't so much a, a, a long workout, but it was really intensive. Yeah. And I'd go up to the top speed and I'd go really fast for 30 seconds and slow it down. And I'd do like a 30 minute workout. It doesn't sound long, but when you're doing it that intensive, it's long. Mm. I'd go back home and then I'd get ready for work, which is teaching. I was coaching to support myself. I was going to local places in Sutton, Harborne. Yeah. Um, and that, that was what, coaching? Coaching, like self-defense, karate, kickboxing. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's what that's how I was doing a living. Yeah. You know, I used to, uh, to train these kids self-defense and fitness. Mm. Not many want to fight. You got one percent. The rest just want to do it for keeping fit. Yeah. So, and then when I'd finished, say if I was teaching in say Sutton Coalfield, I'd run home back to Hansworth. <laughs> On the Tuesday, I'd be teaching Hell Zone. I used to run back from Hell Zone to Hansworth. From Monday to run from Harborn. Sunday from Sutton. So my days were like constantly training all, all day long. But then we're like six to eight week intervals leading up to the fights. I mean, mm. I wasn't a mad trainer. I'm a fitness freak, but coming up to the fight for six to eight weeks, that was, it became very intensive. Mm. And, and looking like you know, I mean, you're, you're, as, you're as fit as a butcher's dog, aren't you? I mean, you know, you, you're yeah. obviously still keeping trim. Do you run every day now? I, I still run every morning. It's like mm. addictive. You know, you, I still find that I need that, that buzz. Otherwise, I feel depressed for the rest of the day. <laughs> so I get up in the morning and the first thing I do, I try and run at least five miles. Sometimes I do eight miles. But normally, just five miles on average, just to keep myself going and start my day off. Yeah, and, and have you done any marathons or half marathons? Because obviously, you do all this running. Do you do, you do anything for like yeah. that for charity? Because I know you do a lot out in the, in the community these days. Yeah, I've done a lot of the five Ks and six Ks. I've never done a marathon. I've done a few half marathons and I've mm. done a few um, ten milers. But marathon, pff, I don't know. I've done enough running in my past. <laughs> but but you know, one day I might just do a marathon just for charity because we yeah. do a lot of support, a lot of good causes, yeah. and I get a lot, a lot of my gym members. You know, the gym I run now, Cash to Flash Gym. I had um, a dream to become a world champion. And you know, when I said to people, you have a dream, you're going to make your dream come real. And that's what, that was my belief. Yeah, because in 2008, you opened the gym, didn't you, which, which you'd always aimed for. Um, and, and I know you've produced it five, six champions from the gym. Yeah, it, it wasn't so much about the champions, but it was having a nice gym, because I'd been in all these pit and sorters gyms all around the world. I've been oh, to okay. different gyms, and I thought, you know what, I want to plan my own gym. And my gym's beautiful. It's in Ladywood. Which is probably described as a deprived area, but the gym's beautiful. You know, got the bags there, got the ring there, got sauna in there, got yeah. nice training rooms, and I got great people in there who come and train regularly. I got young kids from five years up to like 60 years old yeah. who come in and have a little fitness fitness blast. Some of them on the bags, some of them skipping, some of them doing shadow sparring, some working on stomachs, some want to work on legs. So it's, it's great all around, men, women, and children. Yeah. So it's it's not just so much about fighting. It's that self defence and fitness side that we want to work on. And, and the gym is is it open seven days a week? sort of nine till five or is it just an evening well it's mainly in the evenings weekends we're open more in the morning yeah. but you know i'm trying to get the hours you know it's longer get yeah. more people one-to-ones i do a few one-to-ones mm. you know people just want to train with me personally i say right we'll do it such and such a time mm. and they come and have a little workout with me so i'm trying to build up on my one-to-ones as well and, and obviously you've got a website haven't you if people want to find out more about the gym and, and getting in touch and actually coming and giving it a try you've got got your website that's right yeah it comes under my name cash to flash cash to flash .co .uk, and yeah. they can just find me anywhere on facebook Twitter, Cash the Flash. So if anybody wants to link up or find that information, obviously I'm always doing things. Up at the moment, I'm working on a documentary. Yeah, I've just I've got two documentaries. One just gone live now on on, uh, on the social networks. And I've got the other one just being played in New York, and mm. I've got one going to Poland soon. 
So I'm always at it. You're you know? a busy man. Yeah, I'm not the normal kickboxer, you know, just fight. I'm, I do other things outside the box and I support mm. a lot of charities. I've got to do a lot of events. I've got my book out. I've got my documentary out. OK, well, I'm going to ask you about the belts that we see here in a second. But as you mentioned your book, yeah. there we go. Uh, my Life in a Flash. Um, it's out now. Uh, in all, as they say, in all good bookshops. It is. You can get it in any bookshop. It's got an ISBN number, which, you know, if yeah. someone was in London, they'd, obviously this show's not going to London, but if I was in London, they'd, they'd get it the next day. But in the Midlands, you can get it more or less straight away, yeah. in Birmingham, Solihull. Hall. But uh, if they want to go to my website, I can personally sign it for people as well. And it's only £10. So, oh, yeah, it's, it's a bargain. Banner, really. it's, it's, it's a bargain. <laughs> and, that, that, and that tells your story up to, up to date, really, doesn't it? It does. Well, it was a journey, which, you know, there's some good contributors in there. People like UB40 who used to support my shows that are in there. They've yeah. written some stuff about me. Yeah. You know, some of the footballers like David Dunn, uh, Kenny Cunningham, because yeah. I knew them when they were playing for Birmingham City. Right. So they've done a little bit in there. Um, Apache Indian. A big Apache, musician. He did your music, didn't he? He did, yeah. Apache, yeah, Apache Indian. Indian. We're both young inner city Hansas kids. Yeah. We both become international artists. We, we, we met back in the 90s. He'd done a song for me and we disappeared. And then we suddenly <laughs> come back together. Now we're working on a music video for that song because it's my 35 year celebration this year. So oh. we're doing a 35 year celebration. Yeah. So why not put the music video together? So that's what Brilliant. we're doing now. Oh, that's, that's, that's fabulous. So um, you've got your website, we've got the book. These belts, t tell us the, the story behind these belts. When did you, when did you win these? Well, my, my dream when I walked through that door at the gym was to become world champion because my yeah. coach Howard was a world champion. And I started studying videos, people from Thailand, watching the, the Thais. You know, did you know that I was also a Thai boxer? I also fought the best from Thailand. I didn't know that. I fought, uh, yeah, Superman. It was uh, Superman because he was six, Sup foot, <laughs> six, six foot two. From Thailand, they're all about five foot two, five foot I was one. Say, yeah, well, you're six, six, three. Six, three. Yeah. But this guy, Superman, came down and did <laughs> the film. Kickbox had just come out, and I think it was 1990. And he looked at me and he, whoa, this guy means it. So uh, when we went in the ring, he knocked me down in the first and he knocked me down in the second. But after that, I won the next three rounds. You know, I came back. If I didn't go for the knockdown, I would have got the world title in Thai boxing. You call it Muay Thai. Mm. And I also fought John Hardy, had like 275, 280 fights back in 1990, whatever it was. But people are fighting him, you know, now. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, I fought him at his peak and his best. Mm. And then I had the chance to go to Thailand back in the 90s, you know, for six months to a year. But I didn't go. I thought I'd stay in England because Birmingham's my home. I love Birmingham. Yeah. So that's why I had the gym in Birmingham. You know, I'm a Birmingham born and bred Brummy, and I love Birmingham. And, you know, people talk about London and all that. I, and I, I'm no. proud of Brummy. You know, I'd rather everything happening in Birmingham. Even the Birmingham NEC, you know, when it was sold off recently, I had two fights there. So it brings back a lot of memories for me. You know, 10,000 people. And I've had two wins there. The first one, I went 12 rounds with the Mexican. Yeah. The Mexicans are tough. When he looked at me, because I'm tall and skinny, I always said, never judge a book by its cover. He looked at me, he thought, is that Cash the Flash over there? He said, I won't even need the stool. In other words, <laughs> he'll, knock me out. he'll knock me out in the first round. And we went 12 rounds, you know, it was a great fight. And I hugged him a hammering. You know, even little clips like that. That's a good thing about the internet, because people can see on YouTube, yeah. they can go on there with Cash Flash versus Ronnie De Leon. And also I fought a guy, a big grudge match. He was hyped up on all the front page of magazines, a guy from London called Tim Isley. He said, oh, he's the best in England. So I was under pressure. I had nothing to gain, everything to lose. So I thought to myself, okay, let's get it on. So 10,000 people there. He brought a lot of his supporters from London. Yeah. First round, he got the better of me. I just, I'm a very slow starter. Second round, <laughs> fell on his face, on the canvas, didn't make the count. And uh, it was all over in a flash. <laughs> and, and, and that's where the, the, some of these belts came from then? Some of the, well, uh... well, they're all different. There's four world titles I won. Yep. You know, the first world title was at the NEC. NEC. You know, it was at Aston Villa Centre. Yep. It was my hometown of Birmingham. You know, we've got two and a half, three thousand people in there. It's been knocked down. You know, I was sad when that got knocked down. Birmingham was the home of kickbox Aston Villa. Yeah. And that's when I fought Alex Toey. Then second fight, I fought Mexican with the full contact karate title, which is kicks above the waist. That's where I fought the Mexican. Yep. If it was kicks to the legs, I would have knocked the Mexican <laughs> out. He's lucky for him. So that was the second world title. Okay. And then the third world title was again. Is that, is that this one here yeah, in the that middle? One, that one in the middle, yeah. That and, the one, one. and the one, I think we've got one on the front there. Yeah, that was uh, my last world title, which I won against Joseph Ward again in Birmingham. The other one was in uh, Belgium. I won against the German, Bern Grau. I remember that fight well because we, we flew in on a helicopter yeah. to the Wayne. We came in on <laughs> and everyone looking at this must be the world champion. And I came out of the helicopter and we went in and weighed in. It was great. So I've had some great experiences in life, you know, coming in and flying in on a Wayne and a helicopter. Some, some good a helicopter. Experiences. Yeah, I've never been on a helicopter before. <laughs> wow, this is, this is exciting. So anyway, that's how the sport should be. And obviously, at the end, you can see my BBC Hall of Fame. Yeah, how did that come about? Because yeah. that's not been that many people in the BBC Hall of Fame, is it? It's uh, not that easy to get in. Well, there was a Midlands BBC Hall of Fame, which people like Stan, um, Stanley Matthews, yeah. um, David Moorcroft, 
and, and Jones. You know, yeah, some top Owen names. and Jones, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so some top names have all I've followed in their footsteps, so it was a big honour. Being a martial artist, kickboxing, I'm the first martial artist to, to, uh, to go in that, mm. across all sports, so it wasn't just kickboxing, so it was across all sports, athletics, swimming, all of them. And recently, I think this, this year, they've inducted Richie Woodle in there. Oh right, so, and Richie's so in there as well. That's right. Yeah. So that's got. Well, you know, that's that's. A, I mean, that, I, I suppose to, you know, to ask you which is your favourite is 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 a bit of a stupid question. Well, that, really, that, that BBC Hall of Fame goes along that's, with my world, right. yeah. goes with my world title fame. It goes with my world title belts because it's a big honour for me to be recognised mm. by them. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, Cash, it's been a pleasure having a chat to you, mate. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, we're going to get you back in again to talk more about the documentaries and see where you're up to. Maybe next time, if, you, if you've got a young up-and-coming kickboxer at your gym, mm. uh, bring along and we can, we can have, a good, have a good chat. Um, but, uh, but for now, thank you very much. It's brilliant. It's um, so uh, if you've um, got any suggestions of uh, guests you'd like to see on the show, and if we're not talking about your sport, then please email us, extratime at bigcentre.tv. Uh, but for now, that's full time on Extra Time. Uh, we'll see you again soon. And Cash, absolute pleasure, mate. And, Thank you, guys. And I think I'm going to get myself one of those, uh, one of those <laughs> dressing gowns. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.